second biggest economy in West Africa where we are at the African Development Bank and uh, we are talking now to uh, Peter Varkenhorst. He's a senior researcher here at uh, the African Development Bank and we're talking about the 2010 African Economic Outlook Report which details how Africa fared with the economic crisis. Peter, thanks very much indeed for taking time to talk to us. If I can just perhaps ask you if there were any surprises for you in those numbers because we knew the commodity producing nations were going to be affected by this and they were. Yeah, we are quite optimistic about the African continent as a whole. Um, uh, I think we see a strong recovery from uh, a growth of 2.5% in 2009 to 4.5% in 2010 and 5.2% in, um, in 2011. Um, the surprising thing is uh, that there's so much diversity across the continent, you know, uh, diversity across uh, the broad regions uh, yeah, yeah. with southern Africa sort of rebounding strongly but still uh, lagging other regions and also diversity at the country level. Yeah, but in terms of how the countries themselves coped with the crisis, were there any surprises for you in terms of countries able to deal better with the crisis and those countries that were least able to do so? Yeah, they are, they are, in general, Africa has been doing quite well in dealing with the crisis and the fact has been quite resilient. And what uh, contributed to that was a, a well-diversified economy, uh, a focus on agriculture. Countries with a strong agriculture sector fare generally better than, uh, than countries that have a focus on uh, mining, uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, tourism. Um, and also what helped was uh, a focus uh, in trade links with uh, new emerging partners in Asia like, uh, like China and India, which uh, uh, sustained high level levels of growth throughout the crisis mm -hmm. and so the, uh, so the export demand uh, continues uh, uh, to come from those countries. Yeah, let's talk about how the countries dealt with it because we do know Southern Africa mm -hmm. suffered most because obviously of the reliance on South Africa, mm -hmm. whereas other regions that were more commodity mm -hmm. dependent weren't as reliant mm -hmm. and therefore perhaps coped better. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking for forward. There are now issues arising that the Greek crisis may possibly make things worse for the region. What kind of an impact do you see coming out of the Greek crisis? Yeah, I mean, the, the global rebound, the rebound for, for Africa is driven through the trade and investment channel. And one risk that we see going forward is that uh, the global economy will not uh, um, grow as fast as we hoped uh, for, so that the demand for export commodities from Africa will be uh, lower than, uh, than expected. Let me get your opinion. Are you in the camp that says there will be a double dip recession, or are, is the ADB saying, no, there will be no double dip here, we're talking about just one V? It's, it's a very good question. Uh, right now we don't see the double dip recession, uh, but of course there, there's a risk. Uh, so it very much depends how policymakers deal with the, uh, with the situation and how careful they can manage the transition and the, uh, the uh, uh, withdrawal of the fiscal stimulus uh, that still uh, is available in many African countries, but also in, in Europe and North America. Yeah. One of the themes that came out in this report is the resource mobilization of African countries. In other words, how African countries were able to deal in internally with right. the impact of the crisis. Right. From what you saw, how was the picture? Well, I think the crisis has highlighted that Africa very much depends on external capital flows. And, uh, and so I think the, the, the topic of this year's report uh, focusing on public resource mobilization in Africa is, uh, is, uh, is very timely. Um, what we see is that uh, on average for Africa, uh, um, the uh, tax revenues that are raised are quite substantial yeah. and uh, far exceed, for example, aid flows. Mm. But at the individual country level, it's, uh, it's a more mixed and, balanced, and uh, unbalanced picture. Which begs the question then, do African countries have the fiscal space to deal with another crisis should another crisis arise? Um, well, African countries dealt very well with the crisis because before the crisis they, they implemented good macro policies, uh, uh, reduced their debt, maintained uh, uh, fiscal uh, uh, stringency, um, and uh, so that has made it possible for them to counteract the adverse effect from the crisis. Um, doing that a second time on, the, uh, on a prolonged basis uh, will be a major challenge. Definitely it's going to be a major challenge. Now, interestingly, now for your next uh, report for mm. 2011, you're talking about uh, the mobilization, no, not the mobilization, but you're talking about uh, Africa's new friends. Who are they and where do they reside? 
Well, I mean, that's something we want to find out. There's a lot of talk about uh, uh, the emergence of China as a yes. trade partner, as an investment partner. Absolutely. But, uh, but it's very difficult to find information that is, uh, that is quantifiable and verifiable. So what we want to do for the next year's report is uh, bring that uh, information together for China, but also for other partners, for India, for Brazil, for, uh, for intra-African uh, development partnerships. Um, and uh, it would be very nice to, to have a, um, a data set that made it possible to look at the, uh, some of the issues uh, uh, emerging from, uh, from new partners uh, Peter, on the I, continent. I can definitely tell you that there's going to be a lot of interest in that report because there's a lot of discussion around who Africa's friends are and whether indeed Africa is benefiting from the links up in China and Brazil and other countries.